it's Amy from the Grass Valley Library. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of Random Acts of Science. Today we're going to be talking about the water cycle. We're going to do three experiments in one today. So let's get started. If you haven't already picked up a bag at the Grass Valley Library, you can do that. On the outside is a QR code. You can scan that and it'll take you to the library's YouTube page. You can also follow the website there and it will take you to Nevada County Media's page. Hit the watch now button and find the educational and kids programming and you can see a lot more content there as well. They're helping us produce this today and we're super excited about it. So in the bag, you're gonna find the usual set of instructions on how to do the experiment and what's in the bag. On the back side is some more information about the science involved. If you get curious and you wanna dig deeper, that's a great place to start. Also in the bag today, you're gonna find four clear plastic cups. A uh, travel size container of um, shaving cream, not whipped cream, don't eat it. And a small bottle of food coloring. So all of those things are gonna help us do three different experiments. So we're gonna talk about the water cycle first and give you a brief overview. So the water cycle is the way that water moves through the earth, the air, and then back into the earth again in a big cycle. And let's talk about how that works. The first thing we're gonna need is the sun, and that is going to radiate heat down towards the earth, of course, and it's gonna hit the water that's sitting in waterways, oceans, or in puddles, or anywhere on our planet. As the sunlight hits the water and that water heats up, those molecules get super excited, they start vibrating, and they separate out from each other, and they turn into a vapor or a gas, and they start rising because they're warm. So heat rises, water vapor rises. So they are gonna rise up into the air in the form of evaporation, or that is the process called evaporation. So, that's the first thing we're gonna do. The second thing that happens with the water, once it gets high enough up in the atmosphere, it starts to cool down because the air is cooler. And as it cools down, it starts to slow down and the molecules get closer and closer together until they start to come together as water droplets. And we know that as a big cloud. A cloud is just all those water droplets coalescing or condensating together. So that's condensation. And we are gonna do another experiment about that. And finally, when that cloud gets so heavy with rain, gravity kicks in and it pulls the moisture back towards the earth in the form of rain. And when that hits the earth, it goes into our water tables, it goes into our uh, streams and oceans, um, and that is called, of course, precipitation. Okay, so that's the process. Those are our three experiments today evaporation, condensation, pre precipitation. I'm gonna move this back out of our way and let's get started. So the first one is gonna be evaporation. You're gonna take one of the cups that I gave you. You're gonna fill it with water to whatever point you want to, pretty high up on that cup. And then you are gonna mark that high water line with the marker, with a per permanent marker. And that is gonna be your starting point. You're gonna set that in a sunny window. Remember, we're gonna need the sun, we're gonna need that heat to get the water molecules moving. And then you're gonna observe. So it might take an hour, it might take a day. You might even keep going and see how long it takes for the whole glass to evaporate. But that evaporation is gonna take place and that's one way to track it. And you can keep tracking that water line as, it, as more and more liquid evaporates. So, so that is the first thing you're gonna do. You can do that on your own and track your progress. For the second experiment, we're gonna talk about condensation. So as you know, if you have a glass of cold water and you take it outside and you set it out there on a hot summer day, it starts to form water droplets on the outside of the glass. And what's happening is the water vapor in the air, when it comes in contact with that cool glass, it starts to slow down, those water molecules do, and they coalesce and they condensate and uh, they form droplets on the outside of the glass. So let's see that in action. So you're gonna take the two cups that came with the experiment and you're gonna need a glass of hot water. So we're gonna fill that bottom cup with hot water. We're gonna take the second cup, put it over the top. And you can see that it's already starting to cloud up. 
And then to simulate that cold air that you would hit if it were actually going all the way up into the upper atmosphere, we're gonna put some ice on top. You can use an ice pack. You can use some ice cubes. You could probably set this, this on top of it. You can try this many different times and see what works the best. But as long as, as but it's gonna take a little while for that, that water vapor to start working. But as this hot water turns into water vapor and then it hits the cool top of the glass, it's gonna to start to condense. A cloud might even form inside the glass, but condensation will definitely start happening on the outsides of the cup. So. So that is part two of the experiment, and it's a pretty fun thing to do. I'm gonna move this aside so we can get on to part three of the experiment. So the third part of the water cycle that we're gonna talk about is precipitation. This is our third experiment. You're gonna take that last cup, and we're gonna fill it with water. It doesn't matter what temperature that water is. And we're gonna fill it pretty close to the top. Leave a little bit of room. And this is where the shaving cream comes in handy. So this is uh, the very foamy shaving cream. I've done this experiment a couple of times already to make sure it worked. And I think the shaving cream is a little too foamy for what we're after, so I'm not gonna use very much of it. But you can do this experiment multiple times. You can try it with different types of shaving cream. You can try it with more or less um, shaving cream and see what happens and what works best for you. So I'm not gonna use a ton of it, but I am gonna make some clouds right on the top. And then you've also been given a small vial of food coloring. Um, and we are gonna inject the cloud with some food coloring, and then we're gonna watch what happens. When this cloud gets kind of full of food coloring, or when the cloud gets, like as the cloud gets full of moisture in the atmosphere, it starts to drop out that moisture in the form of rain, right? So that's what's gonna happen here. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna inject this cloud with a little bit of food coloring. And then hopefully you can see it start to rain food coloring out of the moisture laden cloud if this were in real life. So there you have it, all three parts of the water cycle. We made it evaporate, we made it um, condensation happened or made it condensate and we made it precipitate or created precipitation. So thanks so much for joining me this morning. I hope you had fun learning about the water cycle. Um, we are going to start doing weekly science programs over the summer and then this fall we'll go back to once a month and we hope to see you in person as well as providing an online platform with Nevada County Media um, to broadcast science for everybody to participate in. So thanks again for joining me and until then have fun with random acts of science.